This latest thing with the search of Mar-a-Lago, they've gone too far, and by putting it in writing like this, this is a sinister document written by sinister men with very diabolical goals. Now, they've worked themselves up into a frenzy. Some of them believe it. Some of them believe that Donald Trump is a monster. He's not, but they believe the fake news. They believe the rhetoric. It's fun. That's the way they pass the time. Who knows? But I can prove to you, actually, that this latest stuff about the classified documents in Mar-a-Lago and the president, it's not true. We can prove it right now. It's easy. Take a look. January 20th, 2021, 2021. He's leaving the White House for the last time as president. I think he'll be back as president. But notice anything? He's not carrying anything. All right? He has no documents with him. All right? Melania has a purse. Do you think they're in there? Now, they're talking about dozens of boxes, right? He doesn't have anything, folks. This is actually relevant. The fake news, the lawyers will say, oh, no, 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 you're simplifying it. No, this is important. And when he gets off of Marine One at Andrews Air Force Base, does he have anything? Did he take paperwork? Was it waiting for him? No, he did not. He did not pack this material himself. And when he gets on Air Force One after a short speech to supporters, again, he has nothing in his possession. Every step of the way, he's monitored. He did not take this material to, um, to Mar-a-Lago. He didn't. Look, does that sound plausible and reasonable? Do you want to go with me or do you want to go with this guy? Some of those documents were marked top secret, sensitive compartmented information. Uh, that is among the highest a designation in terms of the, <laughs> the extremely great. Again? Again? This guy has the nerve to show his face in public after in all of the lies, place. after being so wrong for so long, they go to him again. And they never point out, uh, excuse me, but everything you told us about uh, the Russia probe turned out to be wrong. No, it's just right back to where we started from. How about this guy? The zombie, I like to call him, Judge Ludig. This is what Trump derangement syndrome will do to you, by the way. That's what he looks like now after Trump derangement syndrome. Before Trump derangement, he, he looked perfectly fine. And now he even talks weird. Donald Trump and his allies and supporters are a clear and present danger to American democracy. Thanks. You see how crazy it is, right? I, as a supporter, you, if you're a supporter, you're a clear and present danger to American democracy. By clear and present danger, we talked about this last week, they can go to extraordinary means. They can shut down half the Constitution to take us out. This is crazy stuff. They are the threat. This kind of rhetoric undermines democracy. Now, back to the bureaucracy, all right? With that guy's a part of so many people there. I think this is a small example of just how bad the system is. The National Archives, you've heard of them, right? That's where we keep all of our precious documents. And I do mean precious, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence. You can go inside and see these things, but they retain a lot more than, uh, than those items. Uh, just about everything that's written by every president goes into some sort of storage unit at some point or another, all right? So these archivists are partisan people. They're bureaucrats. Early on in Trump's administration, they were making fun of him on Twitter. <laughs> Career bureaucrats, look at this. Fun fact, President Nixon never fired the director of the FBI. Now, what are they doing? They did that when Trump fired Comey. President Trump fired Comey. They didn't like it. The swamp. These are again bureaucrats, federal employees, who felt emboldened to go to Twitter and make fun of the commander in chief because the swamp, <laughs> they were working against him. Now, officially, they had to chide these employees. They had to. It was a minor story at the time. As a federal government agency, the National Archives does not condone or engage in partisan or political conversations. A tweet from Tuesday, May 9th, that was not representative of the policies of the library or National Archives. You sure about that, pal? Next, the National Archives is examining the training provided to employees who post to social media, blah, 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 retraining everybody. Um, if you made fun of your boss, huh? And they did not fire you. They retrained you. Who could do that publicly on Twitter? Well, 
people in the swamp. Uh, archives are behind all of this. They may have had a role either in planting um, documents. Who knows? It's possible. They did not like them. I think this is proof of that. Take a look at this. It's an agency you probably have never heard of, but they're very important. The General Services Administration. It's essentially like they run the physical plant of the federal government. It's a huge agency, huge budget, and they would have been responsible for moving the president's material goods to Mar-a-Lago, all right? They are actually the movers for the government. They would have contracted, they would have been involved in moving the president down south. What did they do? Were they as resentful and spiteful as the National Archives or people at the Pentagon or the Treasury Department or basically everywhere in the swamp? Because they're loyal to the swamp, they're loyal to their jobs, not to the people. Yeah, I think we have to take a good look at them and what they may have been up to. Uh, so, we've heard, this, uh, we've heard this song before, haven't we? The home of the 45th president of the United States has been raided by the FBI. We're continuing to track breaking news. A judge has unsealed the search warrant used to search Mar-a-Lago, showing the FBI took 11 sets of classified documents. Chilling breaking news about the FBI's search of Mar-a-Lago. The Washington Post reporting agents were looking for nuclear documents. Tonight, we start with that breaking news. Our first look at the search warrant used to seize those highly classified documents. Our former President Trump is saying on his own social media platform. That All right. Good times, right? Mainstream media feels the like the Russia probe even sounds like the Russia probe. Trump is good for business and they can't quit him. Breaking news in the Russia investigation dominates the program tonight and reaches directly into the president's inner circle. We are covering the breaking news that Bob Mueller, the special counsel investigating ties between Donald Trump's campaign and Russia. We've got breaking news on MSNBC. Everything they said, everything was wrong. Everything. I mean, and they're doing it again. They're doing it all over. They have no memory. They never learn. What is it? What is it about these vain, silly people? I don't know exactly, but they're telling us, these vain, silly people, that the most trusted organization is the FBI. How do you feel about that? Here's proof that they are not to be trusted. I'm sorry. I'm disappointed to say this, but the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the D.C. office, still has this silly tweet. The FBI is still seeking information regarding people who committed violence at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. Now, and by the way, these are the folks, some of the folks they're looking for. Now, if they were serious, if they were a trustworthy law enforcement agency, they would have told their political masters by now that you're overreacting to January 6th. We've done everything we can do here, all right? No, they're not giving them a, a clear, uh, objective, professional view of what happened on January 6th. They're keeping it going for their political masters. So are they going to now blame us, those who have been questioning the FBI's ethics and professionalism for some of the things that are happening in America? Oh, yeah, they are. So in Cincinnati, you may have heard that a man tried to attack an FBI field office. Now, this is a horrible thing. We have rules and laws against this. This should not have happened. Yet, this is America. We're adults. We don't modulate our language in case there's a lunatic who's listening, okay? We don't do it that way. You know, I could blame, or could I, Bernie Sanders for that guy who showed up at the ball field in Virginia and shot Steve Scalise? Could I blame Bernie Sanders for that? I wouldn't. And I think that would be unfair. But the guy was motivated, had a far left agenda. So they're trying to govern the way we speech. Don't let them do that. And the FBI was interested in him. They had done several, several inquiries into, uh, into him, no specific credible threat, but they attempted to talk to him multiple times and were not able to. Ah, quick reminder that the FBI, you ever notice this? They always, just missed the guy, or, oh, we're about to talk to him, but we got sidetracked with too many cases. This has been the story of the Bureau. I mean, going back to the JFK assassination, you can look it up. Next. There is no doubt that what happened uh, at Mar-a-Lago this week, and really not the action itself of a search warrant being executed, but the way Trump framed it, the way Republican officials framed it, that was a trigger for him. How does she know? How does she know that? 
Has she been through, <laughs> talked to all of his relatives? What, read his diary? How do you know that exactly? A trigger. What was triggering him last week? This guy's insane, all right? Next. Um, we're in the middle of an eight year uptick of domestic terrorism activity. Uh, it is really stunning to me that in the midst of that environment, we have Republican officials that seem to have not learned the lessons from the last six years that their rhetoric can incite violence. Look it up. Look what she was saying. Look at what her friends were saying. The mainstream media, Democrats, about Black Lives Matter summer for years now, actually. Did they condemn this? No, their rhetoric glorified it, sanctified it. This was a righteous cause. And if you weren't with them, you were against them. Remember that? Where were they? Where was their law support for law enforcement then? Thing is also, that was a big lie, that somehow people of color, the existential threat they face is from police. That's not true. And there are no statistics to back it up whatsoever. But this, this warrant, this is real. They failed us before, and they're going after Trump again. Are we to believe them now? I don't think so.